What's happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson from NoahGameDay.com. Florida State gets its first win of the season over Syracuse, 33-30 to with Ryan Fitzgerald's 34-yard game-winning field goal to end off the game. It was a seven-play drive for 63 yards, led by Jordan Travis and his legs. Jordan Travis gets the start during this game. I think it was a surprise to a lot of the fan base, but Milton was on the sideline for this game, and Jordan Travis got the go-ahead to be the starter. Uh, he throws for 131 yards, two TDs, and interception. Uh, completion of 69%. Look at Garrett Schrader, too. I mean, didn't have an awful day either. We got to see his legs used quite a bit, kind of tearing up Florida State's defense for a little while there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you start off, Florida State has a great defensive start to the game. Um, you know, a, a quick three and out, which, you know, Florida State fans haven't seen in a long while. And that's something that showed some promising, I think, going throughout the whole game. You know, it seemed like the first half defense showed up, second half. Blah, you know, this continues to see that the defensive backfield for Florida State continues just to bad miscommunications. It just keeps happening. Um, and that's something that has to be fixed. If they can keep that fixed, that this defense has the strength up there at the front with Keir Thomas, Jermaine Johnson, Robert Cooper also had a solid game to even Jared Jackson. You know, if that if that defensive backfield can can get better there and communicate better and understand where they need to be and get their assignments down. This is this, 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 this defense can get better. It, it can improve. And that's something overall that Florida State is going to have to work on heading into next weekend, which we'll talk about on this week's show against North Carolina and Sam Howell. Sam Howell has a chance on picking, you know, just picking with Florida State's defense, but we'll get to that next week. We'll focus here on Florida State's win against Syracuse looking at, you know, to me, a few notes that I wrote down up there in the box was number one, I'm looking at accountability and there was a lot of that today or last night. We looked at, for me, I, I saw that Sidney Williams was tripping with the player uh, after a play, but Jared Jackson comes over, gets into his grill and says, nah, that, that can't be happening, man. And I, I, that's a lot of things. I think there was one more instance too. Uh, I, don't, I forget who it was, but the same kind of situation happened with another two players on Florida State's defense. And I, I, as a, as someone covering the team, you know, the fan base, they, they want to see this kind of accountability happen for this team because I think there's going to be growth there. And that shows leadership too. But I thought that was a pretty interesting scenario that I, that I wrote down here on my notes. And I think, you know, having leadership on this team is very much needed. It is very much needed. And Florida State has got to continue there, definitely defensively, which they've struggled and they've had their ups and their downs. Um, but yeah, that's something I noted down here from the game last night. I thought also Cameron McDonald, what a game for him. Tight end starting to get into the mix a little bit more. Florida State's going to have to utilize him a bit. You know, Jordan Wilson, uh, your other tight end, is mainly a run blocking guy, but he was still getting a, a few targets throughout this, the start of the season. I think Florida State finds more success with Cameron McDonald, getting him into that mix, getting him in the rotation of grabbing targets. Uh, I thought he also not only you know, received well, but also blocked very well. I think there was a flag on him later in the game. He made up for it and blocked very well um, and opened up some holes for both uh, Jashawn Ward. You had also Jashawn Corbin here. They almost shared the same rushing yards. Jashawn Ward with just one more yard more than him with 66, Corbin 65. Jordan Travis, once again, 19 attempts rushing 113 yards. You know, there was a few times throughout the game where I kind of got some glimpses of what Jordan Travis looked like last season whenever he exploded. I don't know if anybody, you know, watching this, anybody listening will agree, but I felt like I started to see glimpse of Jordan Travis and that explosiveness. The vision was back. It just felt like he was fully healthy, a lot more fluid. He took some shots during this game. Yes. And I think a lot of Florida state fans are really worried about every time that he goes down because it seems like he can't stay fully healthy throughout a whole game. seems like he was a go. He was all good to go. Uh, throughout the whole the whole day, and that was a, that's a great sign for Florida State. But just overall, I felt like Jordan Travis kind of has that explosiveness back. He also made some good throws, but there's still some things where he's struggling to get down the field with the ball. Deep balls are way over, way overshot, and some of these guys are wide open. I know, you know, he, he was able to find Keyshawn Helton there in the end zone, but there there's a few times where there's guys down the field where you know. Jordan Travis is reading it correctly, 
but he's just not getting the ball down there deep. And we've seen him be able to have successful shots. I mean, we've seen it whenever Ja'Kai Douglas against Notre Dame. Deep ball, beautiful ball, hit him in stride. That's got to be worked on because Florida State is going to have to strengthen or um, stretch that field to threat uh, threaten the defense with uh, uh, the opponents moving throughout the rest of the season. So I think an up and down kind of day for Jordan Travis. But, you know, the biggest thing, I would say more of up than anything because he leads you down the field there. As you can see here on the stat broadcast, he leads you down the field to uh, score seven plays, 63 yards, uh, a minute and three there. As, as I was how long the uh, drive lasted. I mean, that is that is impressive. So he was able to go down the field and help uh, Ryan Fitzgerald, who hits a 34 yard field goal to win. You know, the, I think the whole fan base was, you know, loving it. You know, I, I'm le leaving the stadium they're <laughs> playing we are the champions but it did it does feel well if you think about it florida state hasn't seen a win this whole fan base hasn't seen a win since december against duke so uh, it was as going around in the environment around tallahassee and duke last night it was celebratory night and you know i think this is huge i predicted florida state to win this game uh i predicted florida state to win 31 to 28 a little close slim there almost got it but I think the only way for Florida State to make this any kind of competitive game this upcoming weekend against uh, North Carolina and Sam Howell up in Raleigh is that they had to win this game. They had to find momentum. They had to get a win. They had to feel what a win is. They had to feel, all right, this is a win. This is what's working. I got to bring that up there to Raleigh. And this team desperately needs it. Mike Norrell has not had a win on the road yet. And it's crazy to think that way, but he has not. Florida State is going to have to get after Sam Howell. And I do think Florida State's defensive line, if you look back the last couple of weekends, I mean, look at Robert Cooper, guys. He's starting to emerge as a guy that is stepping up. That's a veteran guy. He he needs to be in there. And in, in that interior defensive line, Florida State is nasty right now. They're still getting picked apart at the linebacker position. We know that. It's always to the flat flats, guys not being there to go, go cover their gaps. The running game defense a few times. But that defensive line is there. Um, you know, Dennis Briggs goes down in this game, too. So we'll hopefully get an answer on Monday from Mike Norvell and the staff on, you know, his availability this upcoming weekend or for the rest of the season. You've got to have him in here. If not, you know, that depth, that defensive line is struggling. So, you know, put on a few more notes here. Uh, McLean, I, I wrote McLean down here. I believe I wanted to talk about him as being a great blocker. I know maybe not on TV, you guys are seeing it, but up there, I love watching a few guys, a few, like I'll, I'll stick on one guy throughout a series, kind of write some notes and jot some notes down, but McLean throughout the whole game. I mean, that guy, first of all, he doesn't look like a true freshman. I, I think on, at least on TV, which we got to watch afterwards. I mean, that cat is big. Uh, and I, I want more one-on-one -on -one shots with him. But for this game solely, a phenomenal, phenomenal blocker. Not only just blocking, knowing his assignment, but there was a few plays where the game, where Jordan Travis was having to roll out, was looking for a pass, but he already had the instincts of like, Jay Trav's running, I've got a block, and he put on a phenomenal block. That's why McLean was named a starter so early in the season because this is what he does. He's came to Florida State early in Rolly, uh, and he's turned, he's just kind of turned. He's kind of turned his energy around once he arrived at Florida State. You know, we were hearing some things, ups and downs, ups and downs, but completely 180. And he's really turned into, he's going to be a big time threat, I think, moving forward for the rest of the season. But I just, the only way for him to be a big time threat, he's going to have the blocking, but I want, we got to see more one on one on one situations with him. He has the physical attributes. You've got to figure out ways to do that. I understand you know, taking shots with some other veterans, but this is a guy, Andrew Parchman, along with McLean, you've got to take these shots and that's how it's going to have to work throughout the rest of the season. You know, looking back at the rushing game, I know we, I know a lot of FSU fans want to see Treshawn Ward get more carries. I don't blame you. You know, I think that's your most overall, most talented back, but I mean, there's nothing to take away from Deshaun Corbin. He's having a phenomenal, phenomenal season and he's a great running back overall though. Treshawn Ward, a little bit more shifty guy. But two attempts, 66 yards. You know, that was a big time series there by by both Jordan Travis, Treshawn Ward, and then to finish it off, Ryan Fitzgerald. He gets his game winning field goal, and Florida State runs down the field and goes to the student section to celebrate. But once again, you know, Jermaine Johnson, there was a few times 
that I saw him getting held. Got away, got away with a few things there on the Syracuse offensive line. I think a lot of things, even Florida State got away with a few things. That's just how the refs were in this game. But Jermaine Johnson, it, it's kind of been this whole season. I, I love watching that guy play. He's fast. He's extremely fast for his size. He conditions. He takes good care of his body. But Jermaine Johnson, going into this game this upcoming weekend, is going to be huge. And, you know, Keir Thomas has a big chance to this upcoming weekend. They're going to be focused a lot on Jermaine Johnson, but Keir Thomas continues to make a lot of pressures too. I don't think a lot of people are talking about him enough, but he's going to have a big chance to kind of take that distraction or Jermaine Johnson is going to take the distraction. Keir Thomas can take advantage. So I think there was a lot of ups and downs. There's positives and negatives to look at this game most certainly, but it's a win. Florida State needed to beat a three and one team. I think Florida State Needed this most certainly moving forward, obviously throughout the rest of the season, but for this game solely this upcoming weekend and against North Carolina, have some confidence, have some momentum. You know, that's something that Florida State needs more than, you know, anybody else, obviously, in the country, but they need it as a young team. They need to see what works. And so this is a, this was a, uh, you know, I hate to say a big win, but big win for that locker room and inside the program. So Florida State will be facing North Carolina at 3.30 this upcoming weekend. We will be going live on Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, previewing that game. We'll recap this. We didn't get to do an instant reaction uh, just due to a few personal things that our co-hosts had to go through. So we'll be doing it. We'll be recapping fully. Florida State versus Syracuse. Then we'll jump into quick hitters and we'll be previewing Florida State versus Sam Howell. Once upon a time in the past, he was a Florida State quarterback commit. And I know that he would like to have his revenge against the Florida State Seminoles. So thanks everybody for watching and have a great rest of y'all's week. Peace.